Well hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to shoot some waterfalls. So we'll go through some tips to help you improve your waterfall photography. first rule that I will say to everybody is whenever you're photo water, photographing waterfalls always bring a polarizer. That is probably one of your most important filters you're ever going to use. I always keep on to the front unless I'm doing something fast moving like um, motorsports or, or any other sports. Polarizing filter is a must. Just focusing on the way the water's coming through underneath the, the bridge. Uh, there's a lovely line and obviously there's a natural leading line as well of the water going all the way through and then in the distance we've got quite the quite the tall trees um, so it's making for quite a nice image I'm not capturing any of the sky in this image it's just going to be a, a sort of enclosed image with the trees and the waterfall quite simple but uh, quite effective probably sounds quite obvious as well but don't be afraid of looking at other different locations a majority of waterfall photographers will shoot upstream myself included and I'm not really sure why that is maybe it makes for a better image but sometimes if you turn around there may be something to be had there as well So as you may have noticed, for each of these shots I'm actually using a tripod and this is another piece of essential kit for uh, waterfall photography. It's also essential for normal landscape photography but certainly here, certainly when you're dealing with um, exposures for around about a second, that's what I try and work towards, a second long exposure. Well it's pretty much near impossible to keep the camera still for a second without in incurring any motion blur. So I always recommend a tripod. The problem with tripods, like any type of photography gear, it can massively range in price from extremely expensive to pretty budget. I recommend that you work out what's best for you. My tripod I'm using at the moment, which is my Frotto tripod, um, it, I think it retails about £200. I've recently book purchased this and I've got it used for 90 and it's almost like brand new. It's, it's almost not used really. So yeah, £90 is what I paid for this tripod. So yeah, I'd recommend looking used if you want to. Don't be fooled in thinking as well that you need grand waterfalls that are 40, 40, 50 foot down from the mountainside. You don't. Sometimes these smaller ones that just cascade down the hills are just as effective. So I think I've got what I needed from here, so I'm going to jump back in the car and head to another location, just a little bit further up the road. Just look at this place for a picturesque car park. Stunning. So I came to this location last September. I first rode around here on my bike, which is a little bit limiting obviously with all the camera gear and then actually went out for a walk. Now, last September, October time, we had a, quite a bit of a heat wave in the UK uh, and everywhere was a little bit dry and the water levels are certainly different today. I think we've had nothing but rain over the past month, two months, three months, in fact, since I was last here. So focusing, normally in landscape photography I'll focus right into the distance or the subject I'm actually focusing on. Now here I'll kind of focus with the mid-ground. 
keeping the uh, the f-stop round up well between f9 and f14 is what i'm playing around with um, so right in the middle of the, of the image uh, i'm focusing just on the rocks so that seems to be where the, the focal point seems to be best at um, and yeah just then then exposing for where the whiteness of the water is so uh, yeah that seems to work for me um, and that's what i've been using for years and it, it's, it's never done me wrong yet he says but I can't get across how important it is to actually expose for the whiteness of that water. It doesn't look that bright with your eyes, but trust me, on a camera, even something as good as the D Nikon D850, it has difficulty trying to expose, or it's only if you blow out the highlights on the white water, trying to bring those back in is difficult. And the thing with waterfall photography, that's where you're kind of focusing, that's where the, the, um, the viewer tends to look the most, is where the whiteness of the water. In any image, a, a, Anybody who's viewing any image naturally looks at the white areas where the sunlight is hitting uh, and the, the brightest part of that image. That's where your eyes are naturally drawn to. No different with waterfall photography. So you've got to make sure that the exposure is right and you're compensating for the brightness of that water because the whiteness in the water, as I say, not so much on a day like today, but even today, I'm still having difficulty. I've got to ensure that that is is exposed correctly. Once I've got that exposed correctly, the rest of it will just fall into place. So landscape or portrait? Well, it doesn't really matter. It depends what platform you want to uh, showcase these images on more. Whenever I uh, post on Instagram, I tend to do them um, portrait. Whenever I'm doing them on Facebook, it tends to be landscape 16 by nine. That's just my preference, but it all depends what you want. But one thing I will say that if you do have the polarizer on the front, which you should, um, don't forget to turn that as well. For, uh, because otherwise, if you've got the camera that way and then you turn it that way, the polarizer will move with it. And you just need to make sure you adjust the polarizer every time you reset the shot. Not a sponsored video, but I saw these in the shop and just had to have them. It's been years since I've had ribbon saucy. Oh, knickknacks, the best. So whilst I'm enjoying my delicious snack, I've got the camera currently doing a two minute long exposure. I've thrown an ND filter on the front of it, which allows me to get a much slower shutter speed, around about two minutes. And what that will do will essentially just smooth the water out completely and almost have like a white line um, as, as the water goes through the river. So uh, yeah, it gives a bit of a unique um, look on that. Um, it's something I'll probably go into in a little bit more detail on another video. But currently all the way through today, I've been focusing I've been set, putting my settings around ISO 64, which is the lowest that camera will go to, um, between F9 and F14, and then just changing the shutter speed to around about a second um, and a little bit over to 1.6 of a second. But I've been doing that as a maximum. Now on each of these shots as well, I've been bracketing the, uh, the shots just to make sure that I, I've got everything exposed correctly. When I said earlier, it's all about exposing for the highlights. Yes, it is. But what it does, it gives you a bit of a safety barrier as well. So it takes a shot underexposed, a shot bang on, and a shot overexposed. And then in Photoshop and Lightroom, you can actually blend those images together to get one image where everything is exposed correctly. HDR used to be one of those things that people sort of turned away from, but it's become so much better, certainly with the software we've got from Photoshop and Lightroom that uh, yeah it, it's, it's essential certainly on a day like today when you've got really dark shadows and then the really bright highlights of the water yeah hdr one shot below one shot bang on and one shot overexposed seems to work if i'm being brutally honest those knickknacks weren't as nice as i remember let me know in the comments which are your favorite knickknacks i've got a feeling that nice and spicy will be top nice So I'm moving away from that location now. So that's location number two, done. So the next one, or the walk towards the next one is quite a bit of a, a trek. So I'll obviously stop and take a few images on the way and uh, yeah, explain uh, a few more bits and pieces. So like any type of photography, the experts will tell you how it's done and what you should do and give you uh, a list of rules you should follow. Now the problem with rules is they do handicap your creativity. If you're following a load of rules, you're not being creative yourself. Now I'm a strong believer that you should certainly understand these rules and know what they are. 
things like the rule of thirds and leading lines, foreground interest, that sort of thing. And these same experts who say you've got to follow these rules also say that art is subjective and yeah, it's all about the individual who's viewing that, uh, that image. Isn't that what it's about? And it is, and it's all about enjoying it. It's all about coming to locations like this and actually enjoying the day and enjoying the images. And actually when you get home, look at them on the computer, start processing them, understand why you did it and understand what made you happy. So this river bend right here, it's one of my favorite places. I'm not sure what it is, but it's, it's magical. There's an old um, ruined building, which is all part of the gold mine here. And then you've got the river that comes all the way around. Now imagine in the summer, this is gonna be phenomenal to photograph. But for the winter where all the trees are dead, you've got uh, a bit of greenery, you've got moss, and you've got this cascading water coming through. It's something unbelievable. I just love it here. I'm not sure what it is. It's just, it's beautiful, beautiful. So for this shot, I've got ISO 64. It's what I tend to use when I'm doing landscape photography. Uh, F14, which seems to keep everything pretty much sharp and it, it slows it down just enough to get a one second exposure. And that's key, a second long exposure. I think anything longer than that and you start to lose the detail. Um, in fact, even at a second long exposure here, just looking at the speed of the water, the speed that that's coming through, maybe a second um, is a little bit too long. I might try and reduce that, sort of get it down to F9 uh, and then retake the image, see what that comes in at. So that's coming in at one fifth of a second, which is probably a little bit better. Let's take an image, let's see what that does. Now another piece of equipment I'm using for today, which I tend to use quite a bit on landscape photography because the shutter speed is so much slower. As I say, the baseline is around about a second, so that's kind of what I'm aiming for. Trying to keep everything still at a second long exposure is more difficult than it actually sounds. Now obviously the tripod is in use now with the camera on there, and I want to try and avoid any shake or at least touching the camera. I, I want to touch the camera as little as possible. Once I've set the shot up, got it in focus, and then I want to take the shot, I'm using this thing, an intervalometer. And what this allows me to do is actually take the shot from here, remote control. So I don't need to touch the, ca the camera. The cam camera stays completely still on the tripod and it just takes the shot it needs to do. Now you don't have to rush out and buy an intervalometer. I just use it because I've got it in the, in the kit bag and it cost me about 25 pounds about three or four years ago. But another trick as well is if you set your camera, I normally do it to a 10, se a 10 second delay. So once you press your trigger, the camera then waits 10 seconds and then takes the image. That works just as well. It gets rid of any shake in the camera, it's only by knocking it and it gives you quite a sharp image. See what I mean when I say that it doesn't have to be a gushing waterfall. Just this simple uh, water cascading just on the side of the hill here makes for quite a nice image. So I'm just trying to work a composition behind me now. I've got the gold mine hut in the distance with the, uh, the trees. These trees have got a beautiful silver look on the end of the branches. And uh, yeah, hopefully that's coming across in the image. Um, I'm, I'm gonna try and work that in post-production. But uh, yeah, that's what I'm kind of looking at now. I've got the bend of the river. I've got this beautiful white water. It is almost like a waterfall within itself around here. It's coming around that quickly. Um, so yeah, got beautiful whites in the water against the contrast of the darks of the water, the gold mine, and then these trees. Hopefully it should be quite a nice image.
yeah like I say I absolutely love this bend around here it's, I don't know it's just so magical right I've got a bit of a slog up now a bit of uh, hill climbing to go and uh, yeah I'll uh, show you the next waterfall but I don't think I'm going to shoot from it I'll, I'll see what it's like when I get there but uh, yeah join you in a minute So I've made it to the top and I'm now working my way down. It's all ups and downs today. I'm just glad I had those knickknacks. That's given me super power to get up that hill. Mm. So last time I was in this location, I was quite rude about this particular scene. I'd seen a, another photographer take an image a couple of weeks prior. And uh, yeah, I was quite rude about it. I, I couldn't really understand what they'd actually taken the image of. Yes, you've got a nice bridge. Yes, you've got the river coming through it, but it didn't seem anything I don't know when you've got so many spectacular places around this location this seems really quite mundane that was until I took the image so yeah apologies about that I was actually quite impressed with the image once I processed it and gave it a little bit of work through uh, through Lightroom but uh, yeah I've, I've, so much so I've come down here I'm gonna take the same image again so here it is One thing to bear in mind here, the rocks are actually quite slippy. So I've just come down the, uh, the embankment there behind me. Um, and yeah, down here, a little bit slippy, a little bit treacherous. And it wouldn't take much to actually fall into this water. Um, and you don't want to do that because of uh, this. That really isn't far from where I was just standing. So I'm not going to photograph that waterfall because the, uh, the fencing does make it quite difficult. I think you're quite limited of what you can actually get. So uh, I'm just going to walk a little bit further around this location now. Uh, I do know of another waterfall, but uh, there's another place I want to stop off first. And we'll go there now. Okay, so I might have lied about not taking an image of that uh, waterfall. Um, yeah, seems as if I come around this corner and that looks quite a nice uh, little composition. So just going to focus on now getting a few shots here again um, yeah around about second long exposure just giving something a, a little bit nice in the movement I am going to try and reduce it again to about half a second that seems to be working a little bit better so we'll uh, see what we get now Started to strip off it's getting quite warm now that rain's gone it's uh, just left quite a bit of a, a muggy day mu muggy afternoon so um, I'm gonna head over to where the main waterfall is now I've stood near it before and it's absolutely raging it is so violent this waterfall it's unbelievable so I'm gonna try and get as close as I can obviously safely uh, there's a couple of people loitering around there so I'm gonna wait for those to go head over um, and yeah just set up for uh, for a bit of a composition now this one this uh, will sort of cover two features uh, I think two uh, two points I want to raise uh, one being yeah quite important when you're taking photographs of these sort of places but the uh, the last one the one I want to finish on is paramount we all need to follow this so uh, yeah I'm gonna walk around that place now get a couple of shots and I'll uh, talk you through the shots then So I hope you can hear me because the water is absolutely raging. It's so loud here. Um, so yeah, the uh, the tip I'm going to give you now is a lens cloth. Doesn't sound very important, but when you stood this close to waterfalls, I mean, you can see the spray over there now. All that spray is doing is coming across here and just soaking me, the camera, and more importantly, the front of the lens. So what I do, I bring myself a microfiber um, towel and it just works. And this will sort of keep me in these conditions most of the day. Obviously, as a bit of time goes by, this will start to get wet and it'll just start to streak. But yeah, a microfiber towel in your kit bag, can't go wrong. Keep it in there for wet days like this and certainly waterfall photography. So 
as well as the lens cloth, you can also bring a shower cap. Now, that sounds quite daft, but a lot of people will actually bring a spare shower cap in the bag to put over the front of the lens. So they're sort of set up for the composition, get everything ready, and then take the shower cap off, take the shot, and uh, yeah, it tends to keep the, uh, the front of the camera a little bit drier. But I have always used the, uh, the microfiber towel. It, it's also a good way to keep you, make sure the lens is clean as well. You're just constantly um, wiping it, certainly with this sort of water. It's no different than sea spray. You're just constantly wiping and uh, yeah, it, it guarantees that you get a nice clean shot. There's nothing worse than getting water droplet marks on an image, it just ruins it. So as we're walking down this path, it's probably the best time to cover one of the most important aspects of um, not only waterfall photography, but any type of photography when you're out in the landscape. And that's health and safety. Yes, oh. I know it's a bit boring. Yes, I know that when you're out in the wilderness, out in locations as beautiful as this, you don't want to be thinking about health and safety and what could happen. But unfortunately, it's a very true possibility that something could go wrong. Now the problem with photography in any part of the field, when you're out and about, you're concentrating so much on trying to get right composition, um, the whole location around you, that it's quite easy to, let's say, miss your footing. And I've done it myself. I, I've, I've been there, I've fallen over, I've actually uh, dislocated my shoulder or my arm. And um, yeah, it's not a nice experience. And I felt as if I was quite lucky but it's always worth doing a bit of a recce of the area. Understand, is it a slippy location? Are there leaves on the ground? Are there holes that you can't see where you can get your leg caught in? If you fall, how far are you going to fall? Things like that. And yes, it's probably pretty morbid to think of, but nobody wants to go home dead. And another issue with these locations, there's very rarely any phone signal, and if there is, it's minimal. Anyway, let's cheer ourselves up, head off to the next location. And here we are for the last location of the day, and the sun's actually starting to come out. Now the reason why I brought you guys out to this location is because five years ago, I did my first video from here. When you finish with this video, scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see my first vlog, where a very nervous Ben was uh, out on location. Um, yeah, just taking images of anything around here. Not much has changed, I'm still absolutely loving it. It's, in fact, every time I come out to do a vlog, I, I still get the same excitement as I did from vlog number one. But yeah, not a lot of change. The, the camera gear has probably changed, the video um, gear has changed. It's all been upgraded, but yeah, I've even got the same car that I had when I came here five years ago. Oh, it's just great. I mean, here it just brings back so many good memories. Oh, it's beautiful. So I've just perched myself on this nice little rock here. I'm gonna have a wet bum in a minute, but I don't really care. So I hope you managed to take something away from this video and understand a little bit more about waterfall photography. I think it is kind of a bit of a skill set in itself. 
understanding the exposure, ensuring the camera's completely still, and working out a composition and understanding what you should actually be shooting when it comes to a waterfall. Should you have everything in the shot or should you just focus in to a small area? Truthfully, the decision's yours. But hopefully this video is giving you a better understanding and giving you a little bit of um, a little bit of oomph to get out there and actually take photographs of waterfalls. Because they're such a beautiful part of nature, your images will be beautiful as well. They kind of have that magic. If there's something in the video that you don't really understand, leave a note in the comments. I'll get back to you as soon as I can and hopefully try and answer any questions you do have. But go and have fun out there. This is what photography and landscape photography is all about. It's all about soaking in these places and it's about getting the best from these locations on your camera. Weather conditions don't really matter. Today's been quite overcast and hopefully I've got some nice images. So I'm going to use this time now to take a few more images around this location, the one I came to five years ago. And I'd just like to say a special thank you, certainly to the people who've been there from the beginning. When I was here five years ago, not really knowing what to say, not really knowing what to take photographs of, just enjoying it. And this is where I am today, still enjoying it, back in the same location, talking to you guys. And obviously a lot more people have come on board of the channel now. It's been fantastic having each and every one of you. I've been monitoring those numbers and I can see when each of you are subscribing. It's great. It really makes coming to these places worthwhile. So a special thank you to each and every one of you. You're all very much appreciated. Right, enough of this soppy stuff. I'm gonna go and take some images. All the best, take care. Next video out very, very soon. Bye-bye now.